Hey guys, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Resolve. In the last episode, we had a real roller coaster of emotions. At least I did. I don't know if you also had one, but oh man, the adventure of the Great Departed Soul. Mwah. Uh, I mean, there were flaws for sure. There were flaws, but let's not talk too much about that. We we finished that, and it was really insane. We met Kazuma again, actually. So if you haven't watched that, down in the description below is the link to the playlist where you can check out all the episodes I already recorded. And I also have the first game there, so check out my channel if you haven't already. So, uh, without further ado, we are about to start episode 4, which is Twisted Karma and His Last Bow. So, let's see what this has in stock for us. From the opening, of course. Yes, from the opening, please. It was indeed a most bizarre incident, born of a curious advertisement and compliment, uh, and commonplace killing at the edge of town. Pipe in hand, Sholmes looked down at the thick, rolling fog outside our window. I wonder exactly how many mysteries are out there, hidden within this bed of fog, he said. Indeed, a most bizarre incident, born of a curious advertisement. A hellhound's mad gallop through the shadows of a serial murder. An executed man's graveyard resurrection in the dead of night. And a commonplace killing in a small, forgotten room at the edge of town. There is, naturally, always another side to every case of which most remain ignorant. And it is that other side which compels me to the scene of the crime, Wilson. So quickly now, take your hat and let's be on our way, my dear fellow. For our adventure is not over yet. Come, the game is afoot. Eight days after the earth-shattering trial and Kazuma regaining his memory. We were in the foyer of one of London's most luxurious hot hotels, the Great Waterloo Hotel. Ooh, ooh. First November, 20... Twen ah, <laughs> sorry guys, I don't know what's going on. Okay, so it's the first November, 10.24 a.m. at the Great Waterloo Hotel foyer. Professor Mikotoba is due to arrive at any moment. Yes, I'm so glad we got here in time. Susato-san hasn't been the same since what happened. Not that I'm surprised. The truth about Kazuma-sama's father. Do you suppose my father knew? What he was actually the mass murderer, the professor you mean? I knew that's what she was thinking about. There's a good chance, I'd say. I mean, they did come here to London together 16 years ago, didn't they? Yes, that's true. Come to think of it, didn't you say that Professor Mikotoba knew about Kazuma going missing in Hong Kong as well? That's right, but for some reason he wasn't at liberty to talk to me about it. That probably means he knows then about Kazuma showing up here in London with amnesia and that he's regained his memory now. Oh, there she is! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Father! Hello, Susato. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. We're delighted you've arrived safe and sound. Hello, Mr. Narodobo. Very kind of you to take the trouble to meet us here. Oh, no, no, not at all. It's my pleasure. We've heard all about your extraordinary exploits here in London, you know. The news has crossed the seas. It, it has? I always look forward to reading the monthly reports that arrive with a steamship from Britain. Oh, I, I see. Well, thank you very much. Who is this man and why do I feel as though I've seen him before? Hmm, I take it from your expression that you can't quite place 
helps me. In that case, how about a little reminder, Seishiro? The phone tap should do. Yes. The phone tap? What? Here we go then. I hereby pronounce the defendant, Dinosuke Naruhodo. Guilty! Oh! Oh! You! The court will now hear the trial of Yunosuke Naruhodo. Your, your Excellency! Hello, Judge Jigoku. How are you? It's been a long time. <laughs> Good you've remembered now. That really did the trick. Guilty! <laughs> Only I was declared not guilty, wasn't I? And there was no laughing at the time. So long and again after all this time. Hard to believe it's been ten years. To be honest, I never thought I'd be back. Neither did I. I didn't imagine Japan would ever be invited to an international symposium like this. Though really, I doubt anyone did, to be honest. It's all thanks to you, isn't it, Seishiro? What are you talking about, Yujin? Ho 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 ho. Of course, Judge Jigoku, he must complete this set. He must complete, complete the set. He's the other man who, 16 years ago, came to London with Kazuma's father and Professor Mikotoba. He's the third visiting scholar. Well, all those passport checks and luggage searches at the border took rather a lot of time. I must say, I'm very envious of your ministerial status. You didn't have to go through any of that, did you? Oh, I knew you were jealous. <laughs> Sorry? Ministerial status? Yes, didn't you know? Seishiro here is also Japan Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs. It was his personal insistence that allowed you to take Kazuma's place here on this study tour. Guilty as charged! Ha 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 ha! Oh, well, thank you very much! He's really every bit as important as he looks. Ah, uh, yes now, Naruhodo. I received a telegram from Lord Strongheart yesterday. Oh, you did? It appears that some things came to light in the trial you were involved with eight days ago. About what happened ten years ago. That's tragedy. Yes, could you tell us any more about it? Well, seems like we're about to converse, but you know me. You know me, guys. I'm sorry. I'm gonna present the armband first, Professor Mikotoba. I wonder, could could you sh could I show you something? Why do you seem so nervous? I I suppose because I'm a student showing something to a professor, that's always quite nerve-wracking. Well, I'm sorry I perturb you in that way, but anyway, I'm afraid I have nothing useful to say about that, really. But it's Kazuma's armband. Okay, okay. And you know me, we are going to examine the lo the lobby, the foyer first. Look at that, it's a picture of the Crystal Tower. Well, the Great Exhibition is one of Britain's most prestigious achievements in recent years. I wonder how tall it is. It really does represent the pinnacle of scientific achievement in so many ways. There's a 20 meter tall chimney on the bathhouse near my lodging at the UMAS University. The attendant there is always boasting that it's the tallest object in the neighborhood. I'm sure, did you know that over the channel in Paris, there's a tower that's 300 meters tall? What? How, how many times taller than the chimney at Yumei Soak in Hot Springs is that? And if that's tall, how does it draw peep uh, properly? The smoke would get stuck, surely? I don't think it's that sort of tower, Mr. Narodo. Uh, I guess they're talking about the Eiffel Tower, so... Hmm. Nothing else of interest here? What about the chandelier here? Have you seen all the sparkling jewels up there? They must have gathered every, every gem in the world for that. Ah, oh, it's called the chandelier, I believe. It's designed to provide elegant lighting in large spacious rooms like this. So they had to gather every gem in the world just to illuminate one room? It's probably electric light bulbs that are actually throwing the light. 
If I tried to hang something like that from the ceiling in the office, it would be scrapping on the floor. I think perhaps chandeliers aren't for you, Mr. Naruhodo. Seems that way. Okay. Nothing else of interest here. What about this? That desk. Uh, that desk is known as the hotel reception. Anyone waiting to spend the night has a report there to sign in for their stay. Oh, so do you think that's the head clerk behind the desk there? Yes, I'm sure it must be. I'd love to stay in a grand hotel like this for a little while, wouldn't you? Just to know what it's like. If the hotel fee was paid through our st stipend, I'm afraid it might bankrupt our homeland. True, London gives the world expensive a whole new meaning. That is still the case, and that is still the case, guys. So, alright, we had a look at this, too. What about these suitcases then here? Look at those cases just left there in, the, in that uh, trolley. Aren't they worried about thieves? I know I am. Haven't you seen the potter over there? Don't worry, he's obviously keeping an eye on everything. Ah, oh, so it's a trap designed to catch any chances who might be tempted. Why did the porter give me such a scathing look just now, do you suppose? Well, some might say you look a little suspicious with your jet black clothes. Not everyone cl clad in black is some sort of ninja with the intent to steal, you know? Yeah, we know you are a good guy. <coughs> Dinoski, you are a good guy for sure. Is he actually the grandparent of Phoenix? Of Ryuzaki Naruhodo, which is the protagonist of the main series of Ace Attorney. Okay, we checked out everything, so time to converse then. Your journey from Japan. So, how was the voyage here? Well, 50 days at sea is a long time by anyone's standards. But it wasn't as bad as when we first came 16 years ago. No, that's true. Then I truly wondered if we wouldn't be drifting in the vast ocean for the rest of our lives. This time, we followed the same route as you, so we were able to relax and enjoy the experience. Ah, oh, so you stopped in France's beautiful capital, Paris? We did, yes, though only for one night. And yesterday evening, we left the port of Dry Dunkirk for Dover. Just in time for the symposium, in fact. It starts tomorrow. It's wonderful that you were invited to attend such an important international event. I'm very proud of you, Father. It's thanks to Seishiro here. Sixteen years ago, he managed to in ingratiate himself with Britain's Attorney General. I'm sure that's why he was invited. And I suppose you could say I'm something of an appendage by default. Speak for yourself, Eugene. You were close friends with a professor for forensic science at a major hospital. Yes, well, I'd rather not dredge all that up, really. No, there's been a lot of water under the bridge since then, but it doesn't bring him back. Cosmo's father, I suppose. Hmm. Okay, so let's talk about Cosmo's father then. The professor, the killer who took the lives of five members of the British aristocracy, was actually Cosmo's father, wasn't he? That's correct. Genshin Asu. Genshin. You knew, I presume, father? Yes, he was a close friend at the time. Genshin came to Britain as a police detective. He was studying investigative techniques at Scotland Yard. I've never understood what drove the man to commit such heinous acts. It was a close trial, so the public never knew the truth and it was executed with little ado. To this day, very few people know what really happened in our homeland. But what about Kazuma? Did he know? Did he know the truth about his father? No, no, of course not. He was told his father passed from sickness. However, I suspect he may have had his doubts. Oh, why? As you know, I tried to guide Kazuma growing up as if he were my own son. Then one day, he came to my office at the university and said, I've decided I want to travel to Great Britain and study there. Do, 
Do you think he wanted to come here to investigate his father's death? I don't know. But when I looked into his eyes, I did know that there was no way I'd be able to stop him. Something else came to light in that trial the other day, actually. Oh, what? Well, having disappeared in Hong Kong and been missing for almost a year, Kazuma's since turned up here in London, working as the apprentice of Lord Von Zeke. What? What? That's news to us. So, Lord Strongheart's telegram neglected to mention that part then. Kazuma's reappearance. As you know, we both thought Kazuma had died on the steamship during our voyage to Great Britain in January. But he didn't die. He's alive. As you knew, didn't you, father? In actual fact, no. What I did know is that when your ship docked in Hong Kong, he mysteriously vanished. We sent a team of investigators to Hong Kong to try to ascertain what had happened, but to no way. But he's still alive, and here in London, you say? I never dared even to dream of it. Why on earth did the young man not make contact? The government and the police have been chasing clues fruitlessly for months now. Well, it seems that he was suffering from amnesia. What? Amnesia? When we first came across him again here in London, he didn't know who either of us were. Hmm, I see. He only regained his memory eight days ago. This is unbelievable. Yes, it's quite miraculous. I wonder why Lord Strongheart didn't let us know. I must speak with him urgently. I wonder how Cosmo's been these past few days. Would it be wrong of us to go and visit him? Your time in Britain. That began 16 years ago now. It's a distant memory, really. It was Eugene here, Genshin Asugi, and myself. We were the original three. The first judicial scholars from Japan to travel overseas to study. Ocean voyages were not what they are today, I can tell you. Sixteen years ago, things were thought for the, uh, things were tough for their generation. Your father was an exceptional fine medical student at Yuma University at the time, you know, young lady. Yes, Grandmother told me. He went to do research at Great London Hospital to study autopsy. Practically unheard of in Japan. Yes, it was an eerie place, a sandwich between the back of a prison and a burial ground. Ah, uh, not more talk of graves. Very often there's no one willing to deal with bodies following the autopsy rule. So you see, autopsy labs have something of an unavoidable relationship with graveyards and prisons. Not my cup of tea at all. Do you remember the Scottish prison governor? Caden, his name was. He was a good man. Yes, but then of course, in all sixth year here, everything changed with that dreadful case. When Genshin was arrested for a series of the most gruesome murders. I simply couldn't believe it. I don't know the man for years. I'd known for the man for years. I was a witness at the secret hearing, and I tried to speak in his defense. But... But you went a little too far and ended up facing charges yourself, didn't you? Well, suffice to say that after the trial we were sent back to Japan. There was nothing more we could do to save Genshin. He was a lost cause, sadly. Hmm. Well, if you'll excuse us now. Yes. I'd like to get this trunk up to my room as soon as possible. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have held you up here for so long. I'll call for the portal then. Just wait here. susato has gone off, uh, off at run. I'd like to stay and talk more, but I do have various preparations to make for tomorrow. Yes, of course, it must be a big responsibility representing our entire country. I wish you the best of luck. Naruhoto, I hope you'll keep an eye on Sasato for me. Keep looking after her as you obviously have been. Uh, no, I, I mean, if anyone's looking after anyone, it's her looking after me. Well, I do appreciate you being there for her, 
after all. I've been a miserable father to her. I've thoroughly let her down. Sorry? What do you mean? Well, it was 16 years ago that I started my long study tour here in Britain, as you know. The very year Susato was born. Yes, I heard. The birth of my daughter was the most joyous event of my life, but... Well, sadly it was accompanied by the most tragic event of my life, too. Oh, yes. Susato-san hinted at something like that. It was a rather terrible time at home. Anyway, I won't bore you with the details. The point is, I became rather less dependable than bef befits a grown man. And it was then that Seishiro offered me to open the, uh, the opportunity to study here in Great Britain. I was too worried about you leave you behind. So perhaps I was a little heavy handed when it came to persuading you to accompany you to me to London. So, that's what happened in a nutshell. And that's also the reason why I now feel compelled to give my daughter as many opportunities as I dare. Though the world does not really readily afford young women such things, I must say. I... I completely understand, Professor. Ah, one other thing, Naruhodo. If I may be so bold, I have a favor to ask you. Oh, really? Of course! What can I do for you? Well, the thing is, I... I'm sorry for that. Uh, sorry that took so long. Mr. Sato? No, then. Allow us to take your bags. Allow me to take your bag. One moment, if you please, Porter. Uh, of course, sir. That machine around your neck. It's a camera, I believe. Quite right, sir. Just five shillings for a lovely photograph to commemorate a wonderful stay at the hotel, sir. Well, I think, given the occasion, we could justify the expense. Oh, yes, sir. Of, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> oh, the way he's sweating. Oh. I'd like to, to thank you for coming with me, Mr. Naruhodo. It's really made Father very happy, I think. Oh, well, I'm pleased then. But we were interrupted before. Professor Mikotaba was about to ask me something. Shall we turn to Baker Street then? I expect Iris will have some delicious tea waiting for us. Yes, let's go. I'm getting more and more anxious about Kazuma though. Perhaps I'll try to meet with Lord Strongheart later and ask after him. Well, let's just move to Baker Street then. A new location has been added, but... We're gonna go to Naruto's legal consultancy first. <coughs> Sorry, guys. 1st November, Naruhodo's legal consultancy. Alright, we're gonna examine everything because we wanna have everything. The spade is still here, look. Please, Mr. Naruhodo, it's not a spade, as I think you well know. It's a shovel. I didn't take, it didn't take too long to reignite that old argument. Ah, oh, I have an idea. Let's give the implement a name like Professor Hairbrain named his tools. Oh, I never thought of doing that. From now on then, let's call it Rinosuke. No, 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 it's clearly much more of a Susato. The old argument has taken a new and unexpected turn, it seems. Haha, <laughs> ah, oh, cool. Alright, what about the teapot? The steam is rising gently from the kettle as always. Yes, I, it doesn't feel right somehow unless it is. But the steam has an unusual scent today. Perhaps the sweet potatoes that I brought back from Japan with me already. Uh. Oh, Mr. Naruto, I heard that, you know. Tears of joy, Mr. Sato, from my mouth. Ah, oh, sweet potatoes are very delicious. I don't know what, you know, what, what your problem is, Rinosuke. Whenever you serve me tea, it always takes me back to Japan. I know you're not particularly fond of the bitter taste, are you? So I do always try to pick out less bitter matcha for you. She does often serve me up an unusual mellow blend, it's true. But the anticipation of the taste in my mouth makes me bitterly worried anyway. It is very difficult for you, isn't it? Oh, unfortunate. Okay, what about the disc? 
You see, I've been keeping my desk beautiful covered in papers as always. You really must tidy up and tidy it all up, Mr. Narodo. No more excuses. But, Mr. Sato, the way I see it, all these papers building up on my desk like this are a reminder of me of my wonderfully diverse daily life. I like to leave them as they are, so I never forget how lucky I am to have such varied experiences. In that case, you should definitely have a thorough tidy. Then you'll be able to see your papers building up all over again and feel that joy renewed. Still can't beat her in an argument, even though I'm the lawyer here. <laughs> yeah, she's too clever. What about the Daruma? That Daruma doll is still winking at me, look. I wonder when he'll finally get his, oh, uh, get his other eye filled in. Yes, I wonder. Well, you should know, Susatu-san. I entrusted the task to you. The truth is, I have already decided when that will be. What? Really? When? That's my little secret. Oh... Yeah, that might be a little bit of flirting tactic. Okay, what about your desk, Susatu-san? My desk is just as it was before I left. Sumi ink and a calligraphy brush, even though we're in England now. That strikes me as typically you, Mr. Sato, and typically not you at the same time. Well, I do enjoy all the wonderful new things to come out of the Western Cultural Revolution, of course. But I'm not ready to give up my brush just yet. And anyway, Sato-san can write more neatly with a brush than most people can with a pen. Practice makes perfect, as they say. What about the aquarium? All the sea life seems very content with them, I must say. I've noticed something recently, actually. The anemones breed at the most extraordinary rate. Oh, really? It's a mis mystery why the whole s a sea a seabed isn't buried in a mountain of them, actually. Oh, how splendid! That really is a mystery. Uh, that really is a mystery, isn't it? I wish there was someone here to explain Susato-san's strange reaction to that. <laughs> okay, uh, da -da -da, we got everything, so it's just her room. Your room across the hall is undisturbed, of course. I don't suppose I'd be permitted to see inside now that you're back, though, would I? You know very well that only Iris is allowed inside. Yes, I heard you two giggling together in there again last night. You can visit Mr. Shorms in his room, Mr. Nadoldo. Last time I did that, he tried to convince me to drink some strange con concoction he'd mixed up. Okay, good to know. Alright, so... Alright, let's move... Uh, du -du -du. Ah, I've almost forgot. Uh, oops. We're gonna present the armband to Mr. Sat, of course. I stayed up late to mend for that you, you the other day, Mr. Nadonito. Thank you, you did a really seamless job. You're very welcome. It's all in a day's work for you, your judicial assistant. The only thing is, I accidentally dropped it into the things yesterday, and now it rather smells. Then take better care of it, please! It was all going so well until I ruined it. Alright, so we did that too, so we are going to move to the suite first. And check out everything here. But, we are going to do that on the next episode of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles! Resolve, guys, because we are nearing the half hour mark. So, thanks so much for watching, and see you in the next episode. See you then.